the iPhone 15's launch is just a month and a half away. Pretty crazy. In our previous iPhone 15 Leaks Numbers episode, from almost a month ago, we covered 7 major new updates. And this time, we've got 10 more updates to talk about. The first one is the battery capacity. The information claims that the iPhone 15s will feature a considerably larger battery, with the iPhone 15 now set to feature an 18% larger battery, the 15 Plus to feature a 13% larger battery, 14% more on the 15 Pro, and 12% more on the 15 Pro Max. Pretty interesting how now the 15 Plus could have a larger battery than the 15 Pro Max, probably due to having more space inside because of the smaller camera modules. I still think that the 15 Pro Max will last longer, despite its smaller battery size, as number one, its display will be more power efficient thanks to its dynamic refresh rates, and number two, the Pro models will be getting the new A17 chip, which is said to be based on a smaller 3 nanometer manufacturing process, and as we all know, this will be more power efficient compared to the current 5 nanometer process. Also, in case some of you are a bit skeptical of these pretty significant battery size increases, a 4 former Foxconn worker who spoke to IT Home claimed the same thing, that the iPhone 15s will feature a significantly larger battery. And we ourselves measured our dimension accurate iPhone 15 case models from China to be thicker, with the iPhone 15 Pro being 0.65mm thicker, which does make the battery size increase info far more believable. And I'm personally very excited for this, as the battery life on my 14 Pro um, has been quite poor. If you've been following me on Twitter, uh, sorry, X, you know what I'm talking about. And this year, I'm going to be switching to the Pro Max, which should give me the best battery life I've ever had on any iPhone. Speaking of the battery, in our previous video, we talked about the European Union Parliament voting on a new law that would require smartphone manufacturers to make their batteries easily removable and replaceable by users. Sort of like we used to have with traditional smartphones, where you would just pop the back cover off, remove the battery, and slot in a new one. That sounds great, as you could just carry a bunch of these batteries with you when you're traveling uh, and away from a power source, and then swap them out in a matter of seconds. However, we might not be able to do this with our iPhones, as apparently, if you read the small print, smartphones will still be allowed to have an integrated battery if the manufacturer uses high-quality batteries that retain at least 80% of their health after 1,000 cycles. If you go on Apple's battery page, iPhones are rated at 500 cycles, but all their other products are listed at 1,000. So I wouldn't be surprised if Apple switches to another battery manufacturer and updates the iPhone rating to 1,000 cycles too. Plus, another exception to this new law seems to be waterproofing. Essentially, devices that have a certain water resistance would be exempt from having a removable battery. Apple's iPhones are not waterproof yet, they're only water resistant, but we have heard rumors of Apple wanting to create a completely sealed iPhone one with no ports, no physically pressable buttons either, that would then also be fully waterproof. We'd love to hear your thoughts on removable batteries on iPhones below. Moving on to some non-battery updates, we all know by now that the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be getting a periscope zoom module to increase its zoom level to far more than the current 3X. But we didn't really know for sure what kind of zoom levels it would have. But now, we kind of do. Not only did Ming-Chi Kuo claim around 5 to 6x, but a Weibo leaker now claims an optical zoom level of 6x. This might seem underwhelming when compared to the S23 Ultra's 10x optical zoom, however, the resolution of that periscope zoom module also plays a big part in how much you can actually zoom in. For example, the Pixel 7 Pro, although it only has a 5x optical zoom lens, half of what Samsung has, the results are almost identical to the S23 Ultra's module, as the Pixel has a much higher resolution resolution of 48 megapixel sensor as opposed to 10 on the Samsung. So as long as Apple uses a high resolution sensor for that 6x zoom module on the 15 Pro Max, they could technically even surpass Samsung in terms of the zoom levels. Now, this Weibo account also shared some info regarding the camera on next year's iPhones. More specifically, he claimed that not only will we get the Periscope module on the standard iPhone 16 Pro 2, something that we've seen reported before, but that the iPhone 16 Pro Max will actually get an even better zoom level compared to uh, this year's. He was referring to Super or Ultra Zoom. That could be the equivalent of a 300mm lens, or even more. Now, that would be pretty insane, as it means that we could get an optical zoom level of 12.5x, or even higher which of course, combined with a high resolution sensor as well, could give us some incredibly insane level of zoom. 
Also in terms of next year, that very same Weibo leaker reports that the iPhone 16 Pro Max and not the 15 Pro Max would be the one to feature that larger 1 over 1.14 inch sensor. This larger sensor was initially reported by Ice Universe back in April, so it could either be that Apple has changed their mind and uh, pushed that new sensor to next year's iPhone, or that Ice Universe is still correct and that we'll see this new sensor this year. Personally, I would put my money on that larger sensor coming this year as number one, IC Universe has a very, very good track record, and number two, when we took a look at those case models back in June, we found out that the camera was larger and thicker on the 15 Pro Max compared to the 15 Pro, with all lenses being about 0.4 millimeters taller. And Twitter leaker RG Cloud S claims that the iPhone 15s would also come with a hybrid lens, making it the first phone from a non-Chinese manufacturer to come with both plastic and glass lens elements, as opposed to just plastic. What does this actually mean? Well, the image should be a bit clearer and the color reproduction should also be a bit better. It is reported only one out of those seven main lens elements would be made out of glass, um, and that the aperture would also be increased to f1.7 from f1.8 for about 50 to 20% more light capture. Interestingly enough, he also claims that the main sensor would remain the same, just like that Weibo leaker reported. So yeah, I guess that we'll have to wait and see if the 15 Pro Max does actually get that larger sensor or if we'll have to wait until next year for that. Another piece of good news is when it comes to the storage options. So according to IT Homes Insider at Foxconn, the base storage on the Pro models would now be bumped from 128 to 256. Now, this is great news for people like me who have always needed a bit more than 128. Plus this also means that we should now be able to record ProRes in 4K on every single Pro model of the iPhone, whereas before this was restricted to the 256GB models or higher. The bad news here is that the price is expected to be increased. And this isn't just based on, you know, Apple bumping the storage. In fact, multiple sources have reported that the price of the two new Pro models would be going up. Now, the price of the iPhone in the US hasn't really gone up since the launch of the iPhone 10, as the Pro model has always started from $999. But outside of the US, we have seen numerous increases over the years. Here in the UK, for example, an iPhone 14 Pro costs £1099, or the equivalent of $1419. So I wouldn't be surprised if the iPhone 15 Pros increase the cost by $100 in the US and at least £100 more here in the UK. In fact, the S23 Ultra is actually more expensive than the iPhone 14 Pro here in the UK, so by Apple bumping the price by £100, they would once again take the crown as the most expensive non-foldable phone. Okay, the next update comes from a Bank of America analyst who claims that the iPhone 15s might be released later than September. So he's also the same analyst who predicted the delayed launch of the iPhone 12 that didn't go on sale until October and even November for two of the models. Last year, we also got the iPhone 14 Plus a month later. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case as well this year as we are set to get the dynamic island on all four models now, which could impact the production, on top of all the other changes, such as the titanium frame on the Pro models, uh, the new rounded frame on all models, the larger batteries, the A17 chip, the Periscope module on the 15 Pro Max, and a couple more. And if that's the case, we could see the event being delayed to October, just like uh, what happened in 2020. And lastly, two of my previous predictions, which were the new blue color and Wi-Fi 6C, both of which were purely based on what I thought that Apple would very likely do, have now both been leaked. So Wi-Fi 6C was confirmed by two Barclays analysts, Blaine Curtis and Tom O'Malley, giving us double the Wi-Fi speeds from 1.2 gigabits per second to 2.4, uh, if you have a Wi-Fi 6C router, and then the new blue color was confirmed by leaker unknown Z21. All in all, I'm pretty hyped for the iPhone 15s. It is definitely looking like one of the biggest updates ever in the past few years with USB Type-C, you know, titanium frame, Periscope module, and just loads of upgrades. Um, so yeah, the Pro Max will especially be a good one to get this year, and like I said, that's the one that I'm upgrading to, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, feel free to subscribe for more iPhone 15 updates as soon as we have them. I'm Daniel, to Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Enough tech, signing out. Cheers.